Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting um, an abstract landscape, um, trying to sort of um, create the look of a landscape, the suggestions of landscape features, but without actually painting any of those features in. And um, by that I mean I'm not going to paint any trees, fences, um, hills, fields, bushes, um, flowers, anything specific. I think what I am going to be doing is um, using my kind of experience from the way I paint normally, which is very loosely, to just try and get the paint to flow um, and get it to sort of um, suggest trees. Uh, fields and hills and I'm just going to be using Payne's Grey for this exercise. Now I've wet my paper, my board's at an angle of 45 degrees and I'm using my extra large Pro Art Harky brush just to put on the paint in the kind of shape or suggestion of trees, distant fields and hedge boundaries. Now I'm not overthinking this, I'm just enjoying myself and sweeping the paint on using mostly horizontal um, strokes of the brush and as it flows down because of my board being at an angle of 45 degrees I can tip and tilt my board as I want to um, just to help the paint to flow to keep it more or less horizontally oriented if you know what I mean because once I turn it the right way round where the paint is running off down the page it's following those slightly sort of horizontal and narrow um, shallow diagonals that I've made with the brush um, and they kind of suggest a sort of hilly downland landscape very similar to the area that I live um, in the South Downs in the south of England. And using what's left on my brush I'll just quickly rough in um, a quick wet in wet um, flat wash sky just to um, reinforce this kind of illusion that I'm creating of this landscape. Now the reason I'm doing this is to try to um, explore and experiment with these sort of abstract shapes and forms and directions of brush strokes and brushwork um, in order to try and simplify my paintings even more. Um, and I think it's a good exercise because sometimes we can get too bogged down with detail and our paintings can become too cluttered. So if you use the back of an old painting or a sketchbook, something like that, and try this sort of thing out as an exercise, um, see if you can suggest rather than overtly painting. And it can be really useful because then you can bring this technique into your more complex and planned works. Um, so that parts of your painting, some passages can be incredibly loose and just suggestive, suggestive of the landscape. And then when you hone in on a little bit of detail just in your focal area, that gives it far more impact um, as it contrasts with the very loose suggestions of landscape features. I'm going to stop now. I'm not going to do any more to it. I'm tempted to sort of mark in some tree trunks and things like that, and maybe a few fence posts and some sort of field furrows, but I'm going to leave it now um, and let it dry. And once it's dry, we'll come back and, and have a little look at it and then see um, how it looks, whether I've succeeded in what I wanted to try and uh, portray here. So here it is, it's dry and um, I hope you can see what I can see here which is a sort of distant tree line going off into the distance, um, some fields, um, hedges, sort of ploughed field across the foreground. I mean it is, it's very loose, it is an abstract, there's no detail to actually bring it into focus or to make you um, understand that there is a countryside scene or a landscape here but 
as far as I can see, I could see where I could put in just a few hints of tree trunks coming down from the masses across the horizon line. I can see where I could just put a few more hints and little tiny details to bring it together if I wanted to turn it into a landscape. But what my brain is doing is reading these very random but fairly considered marks that I've made on the paper as a loose landscape. And that's what I'm looking for because one thing I'm focusing on at the moment is trying to um, take my paintings a little bit further in some ways. Um, in 2022, I want to focus in my personal work on keeping my paintings really loose and fresh with minimum brush strokes, but then focus in and hone in on some sort of detail that's come from careful observation and maybe sort of using some sort of sketching skills. I want to definitely increase the amount of sketching that I do this year. So I think that that's going to be um, my creative New Year's resolutions, some of them anyway, um, will be to do a lot more sketching, especially outdoor plein air sketching, um, and to also try and really focus on um, very loose abstract brushwork for my backgrounds. So here are a few more examples of the kind of thing that I've been working on recently for my own personal paintings. Um, again, more of this kind of um, trying to suggest the landscape without any obvious features, just allowing um, the magic of watercolour, mostly wet in wet, with soft and hard edges, lost and found edges, um, deep contrasts of tonal value and sort of subtle washes of colour, just allowing that to describe the landscape without any detail. As for YouTube tutorials, I'll be continuing with them in the same sort of vein as I have done this year um, by doing quite a, um, a variety of, of different types of scenes, some semi-abstract, some more realistic. I hope to focus on a lot more line and wash paintings because they seem to be very popular and I actually really enjoy them. And that kind of is something that I can really focus a lot more on my sketching and bring that to bear in the line and wash. So I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank you so much for your support over the year. Um, it's been wonderful to see the channel grow and well over 50,000 subscribers now, which is fantastic. So thanks again, and also thanks to my wonderful um, group on Patreon who support this channel. Um, I'm wishing you all a happy and creative new year um, and happy painting and see you next in 2022. Bye.